So what effect does a muta mutation have on our gene? And we're going to talk about different types, so silent, missense, nonsense, frame shift, and trinucleotide repeats. And the simple answer is these consequences depend on where do they fall in a gene. Are they in a coding or a non-coding region? So if you think back to what the coding regions are is, are we finding a mutation in an exon? Or if it's non-coding, are we finding a mutation in an intron or in a regulatory sequence? If it falls in a coding sequence, it can have an effect on our protein structure and function. If it co falls in a non-coding sequence, it can affect our gene expression. Okay. So if it is a silent mutation or synonymous, that means that we change one codon for a synonymous codon of the same. So TTT, so here we go, TTT phenylalanine becomes TTC, which is still phenylalanine. Remember that wobble base? So remember that the code is degenerate, and the code is degenerate because it has these synonymous mutations. So if a mutation occurred in the third base pair, chances are it wouldn't have an effect. So a synonymous mutation changes the sequence, but it doesn't change the amino acid or the protein. So what about TGG? Can we introduce a synonymous mutation for TGG? So T, G, G, tryptophan. Tryptophan doesn't have a synonymous codon. So we couldn't have a synonymous codon or a synonymous mutation with TGG. Again, synonymous change the base pair sequence, doesn't change the protein. Because it doesn't change the protein, these are often considered to be neutral mutations. Okay, So they have no effect, no detectable effect on the protein function. Our next one is non-synonymous or missense mutations. So these, again, change the base pair. So if I give you U, 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 and I say, hey, introduce a non-synonymous or missense mutation, you can tell me U, U, A. So U, U, U was phenylalanine. U, U, A is leucine. So now we went from phenylalanine to leucine. And now you're like, hey, professor, what effect does this have on our protein? My answer is it depends. So we think about, oh, this is just a single base pair change. Like, that can't be drastic. But it can because sickle cell anemia is a single base pair change. So we had a single base pair change here. It went from glutamic acid to valine. And now we know you get a sickle cell phenotype. So the non-synonymous mutations occur in two flavors. They can be conservative or non-conservative. If it's conservative, it means we went from one amino acid to another amino acid in the same category. So we can classify these amino acids depending on their side chain. So if we changed a nonpolar amino acid for another nonpolar amino acid, it might not have a detectable effect. So these are often considered neutral or near neutral mutations because they are going to be similar. Whereas if it's a non conservative mutation, we went from one type of amino acid to another. So here we can go from acidic to basic, from nonpolar to polar, from nonpolar to acidic or basic, giving it a charge. Now we know that this can affect how our protein folds, which can affect how our protein functions. Okay, So non-conservative may be more detrimental than a conservative mutation. Another thing that can happen is nonsense mutation. So if a codon is changed into a stop codon, it's considered a nonsense mutation. Remember, these stop, stop codons are called nonsense codons. So if you create one, it's a nonsense mutation. The effect of a nonsense mutation depends on how prematurely have we introduced that stop codon. Okay? So if we introduce it where we're cutting out a part of a, a large part of the protein, it can give us an incomplete protein. This may or may not function. And if it functions, it may be okay, it may be detrimental. Regardless, it's called a truncated protein, meaning it's smaller. Now, another effect can be it signals nonsense mediated decay. If that happens, then we're not producing a protein at all. Okay? So with nonsense mediated decay is our ribosome is going along and it's here we go. With nonsense mediated decay, our ribosome is going along on a transcript and it hits that premature stop codon. Well, there are things in place to recognize if this happens. So if those things realize that this is happening, they're going to cause for that mRNA to be decayed. If we decay that mRNA, we can't make that protein. 
So the consequences of a nonsense mediated decay or nonsense mediated nonsense mutation depends on how much is how much is truncated. So it can be we produce a, a protein that's fine. So maybe we only lost one codon and that's okay. Or maybe we produce half the size and now it has this like a gain of function where it's detrimental to the cell. Or maybe we don't produce it at all because nonsense mediated decay kicks in. Okay, so a silent mutation change the sequence, don't change the amino acid. Nonsense change the sequence to introduce the stop. Missense conservative or non-conservative, conservative. We change the sequence into it codes for an amino acid that has similar properties. Non-conservative, we change the sequence, we change the amino acid into an amino acid that has different properties. So. If it's an insertion or deletion now, it depends, is it frame shift or in frame? So if it's a frame shift, you insert or delete one base pair and it changes the entire amino sequence downstream of it, okay? So here we see a T was introduced and now we have, instead of proline and theanine, we have serine and histidine. So we are changing the entire thing. If it's a multiple of three or an end frame, we're just inserting an amino acid. Yes, it's going to have an effect on the protein, but not as detrimental as changing the entire sequence of that protein. If it's a nucleotide expansion, now it's going to insert the same amino acid over and over and over again, which can have a drastic effect on it, and it can cause a whole lot of things, depending on what kind of amino acid, where it's located, et cetera. So one example of this we talked about was Huntington's. So Huntington's has trinucleotide repeats, and we know that that has a neuro, neurological disorder. So if we recap here, so here's our normal sequence. If it's a nonsense, we insert a stop, and this is going to truncate our protein, and depending on how short our protein is, it's going to dictate the effect of it. If it's a missense, we change the sequence, we change the amino acid. It can be one amino acid, and it could be neutral, because it's similar or it can be non-conservative and have a drastic effect. And if it's frame shift, we can change the entire sequence. Now, if these are the consequences, so this is listed in the book, goes over to change what type of mutation it is, gives you an example. Are the amino acids altered? What's the likely effect on the protein, okay? So look over this at will. You have this over and over again as an example. So th if this is going to help you, then you can take this example, decode it. So change it into a, a RNA, change it into a protein, introduce each mutation, and have an example in your notes of how it changes. You can also use the sentence example if that helps you. So just change the words accordingly to what kind of mutation it is. Like you can change a consonant to a consonant versus a vowel to a vowel. So now we talked about if it was in the coding sequence. Well, what happens if we have a mutation in a non-coding sequence? I'm sure your first answer was probably like, oh, it's fine because it's not in the coding sequence. But then you have to remember what happens in those non-coding regions. So in those non-coding regions is where our regulatory binding sites are. So it can affect our, our promoter, which can affect polymerase binding. It can affect our enhancer. It can be in the intron. It can affect the intron splice site, okay? So we have to think about those non-coding regions as still being important. So while they might not affect the protein structure, they will affect the expression of it. So if you have a mutation in a promoter, now you're going to tell me, hey, you might not have the same amount of transcription as you normally would. So this is also a table listed in the book. So if it is a mutation in the promoter, it can increase or decrease the rate. So if it increases it, it's called a up promoter mutation, okay? Up promoter mutation, increase. Down promoter mutation decreases it. And so if it's a promoter region, it's going to affect if polymerase can bind. If it's in a regulatory segment or operator, so now it's going to disrupt protein binding sites. So maybe a silencer or an activator can't bind. If it's in our UTR region, so this untranslated region that's before or after our translated region, it can alter if we translate, it can alter stability. So say if you mutate the cap, now you don't have a stable mRNA molecule. Or if it's in a splice recognition site, it can affect our ability to splice it. So this can actually change the structure and function of a protein, okay? Because if we include an intron that should be removed, now we have changed our protein.
So these mutations are still important. So if we summarize, usually a mutation in a coding region affects the protein structure and function. But we know it depends on what kind of mutation it is because if it's a silent one, it's not going to have an effect on the protein. Okay. If it's in a non-coding region, it generally affects how much of a protein is made. The, but if it's in a splicing, even though that's non-coding, it might affect protein structure and function. Okay. Okay. So now we are recapping, looking at it a different way. So here we have our DNA, our mRNA, our protein, and we're introducing a mutation. This is a northern blot showing you where the mRNA will show. So remember, this is going to do it by size. This is a Western, which is used to show proteins. And so under normal circumstances, this is where our mRNA is. This is where our protein is. If we change a single base pair change in a missense mutation, which changes an amino acid, but only one, they're still going to migrate around the same size. If it's a nonsense mutation where we introduce this stop codon, so our mRNA is the same, but now our protein size has changed. It's smaller. And if it's a frame shift, our mRNA might be the same, but our protein is going to be bigger or smaller depending on where that frame shift is located. And if it's a regulatory mutation, then we might not make the mRNA at all, which means we can't make the protein. So it's a change in our gene expression. Okay. So those are several different ways to look at these mutations. So choose the one that speaks to you and your learning style.